In the previous board, we found that uh, conservation of momentum isn't quite enough. We could think of a lot of scenarios when two things collide that would conserve momentum, and only one scenario is going to happen. Right? The universe is deterministic at this scale. It's only one thing's going to happen. So clearly, we need more information. We also need conservation of energy. Uh, conserve energy. And in these little collisions, we only have kinetic energy. We don't really have any mechanism for potential energy. So I'll say also conserve kinetic energy. All right. If this wordy thing bothers you, you could also say that in the previous board, we had a system of uh, one equation and two unknowns. So we need another equation. So we're going to get it here. So you really can't solve these just by conserving momentum. You have to conserve energy. So if we throw that in, it actually leads to three kinds of problems, three kinds of collisions. And rather than just starting to solve them, I just wanted to lay them out and let you understand the differences. So let's start with an elastic collision. So elastic basically means you conserve kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. So you might think, well, what else could there possibly be? That's what we said we have to do. We have to conserve kinetic energy. Um, so in this problem, you know, you have M going to hit another M, and you're wondering uh, what they're going to do, right? So one thing we know is the final momentum equals the initial momentum. But now, the other thing we know is that the final kinetic energy equals the initial kinetic energy. So now we have two equations, two unknowns. That seems promising. Um, another kind of problem is an inelastic collision. Well, let's see. In an inelastic collision, you uh, lose some kinetic energy. Some okay, kinetic energy. And of course, you still conserve momentum. So P final equals uh, P initial. But then in a problem, you'll be given how much kinetic energy you lose, right? So you might say, so for example, I might say in this collision, you lost 20% of your kinetic energy. So say uh, K final equals 0 0.8 K initial. And it would probably be some numerical problem with some plug and chug, and, and you would get to the bottom of it. So that's an elastic and inelastic collision. You have to be careful when you say this. If you say inelastic collision, does that mean an inelastic collision? Or you know what I mean. So that is an inelastic collision. So then you'd say, what else could there possibly be? Well, there's one more. All right, there is a perfectly inelastic collision. Okay, perfectly inelastic collision. And what it is, really deep down, deep down, it is the most K you can lose and still conserve P. So you might say, I could have an entirely inelastic collision. You have to lose all your kinetic energy. If you lose all your kinetic energy, what's going to happen? Both masses stop. Well, you can't always do that. Because if you had initial momentum, that can't happen. It could happen if you had a zero initial momentum. They were coming at each other at the same velocity, same mass. Then they could just stop. And you would be perfectly, or you would lose all your inelastic, or all your kinetic energy. But say this one's still, and this one's moving this way. It has initial momentum. The final state has to have initial momentum. It can't just stop. There's a limit to how much kinetic energy it can lose. And that's what a perfectly inelastic collision is. It's the most it can lose. So you'd think, wow, that must be hard to calculate. Here's the lucky thing, OK? Uh, the lucky thing is it occurs when the masses stick together. Why? Oh, it's complicated. Let's not worry about why. You can actually go through the numbers and convince yourself why. But for now, I just want you to memorize or just to know that this is the case. Perfectly inelastic, it's the most K you can lose, and it occurs when the masses stick together, which really just means the masses have the same final, uh, the, the same final velocity. 
It's another way of saying the two final velocities are equal. So if you look at these three, you might say, what are we going to do first? Which one is the easiest one? You'd probably say, yeah, this is probably easiest. right? And then this is probably second easiest. And then I don't know what the deal is with this. This is weird. It's actually the complete opposite. The easiest one to do is this one. And the reason is, what does this really tell you? Really, this tells you that v1 final, if you were numbering them, equals v2 final. So of the two unknowns, or the two equations, two unknowns, you're going to end up with, you're going to have one equation as conservation of momentum. The other one is just this, is that these two velocities are equal. That's actually a lot easier to deal with than conservation of kinetic energy, where the velocities are squared. It causes all kinds of trouble that you're going to see. So we're actually going to go backwards. We're going to do this one first, and then we'll talk about elastic.